between 50 and 200 metres below the surface of Cyprus's UK overseas territories lies a band of twilight, the mesophotic zone. Sunlight is scarce, yet life flourishes. Until now, these depths were almost unmapped. That is why we launched Mesophos, to reveal, understand, and protect what few have ever witnessed. Funded by the UK's Darwin Plus local program and led by the Marine and Environmental Research Lab with British and Cypriot partners, Mesophos followed a clear plan. First, local knowledge from fishers and managers guided our search grid. Then, existing charts and bathymetry refined the targets. Finally, a small underwater robot, our ROV, explored 32 sites filming from 50 to 200 meters deep. For the first time, we've revealed a clear picture of these hidden depths around Akrotiri and Dekelia. Far below the surface, in dim waters, we found reefs, prominent structures shaped over centuries. They're home to species that amaze and threaten species like this coral, Paralcyonium spinulosum. Alongside it, the Anthozoan Calagorgia verticillata. Both were recorded for the very first time in Cyprus. In the reefs, some species glow, others hide in crevices, waiting. Pink crustose coralline algae cover the rocks in vivid color, and bright sponges stand out boldly against them. Clouds of commercial shrimp, fast and almost translucent, pulse above the reefs. Starfish creep across them, steady and silent. Brachopods sit like tiny shells, filtering food from water. Similarly, Ascidians anchor to the reefs and quietly filter water. Fish slip into cracks and crevices, hiding from predators that lurk in the dark. These deep reefs hold more than beauty. They carry stories of resilience and of life thriving in the dark. On the other hand, we didn't expect much in the sand but the seabed surprised us. Merle beds. Unique habitats built by free-living, calcareous red algae. Formed intricate structures across the bottom. Calopa meadows swayed with crinoids, their feathered arms catching the current. Hydroids rose like delicate trees, anchoring clusters of squid eggs. A strange mudworm vanished suddenly into the sand, gone, like it was never there. Nearby, an anemone sat planted in the sand, patient and quiet, with its tentacles gently outstretched. Sea pens stood upright in the sand, like feathered quills. Those fragile animals are easily damaged by trawling and sediment disturbance, yet here they remain. In the sandy stretches, fish moved low and quiet, a group of long-spined snipefish hovered like needles in formation. A long fin gurnard swam just above the seabed, its fins spread like wings. A scorpionfish rested motionless, camouflaged and armed with venomous spines. A bandfish glided toward its burrow, slipping in headfirst, alert and fluid. From the Soliadae family, a flatfish melted into the sand, almost unseen. Sandy habitats may seem barren at first glance, but they're rich with life, delicate and worth protecting. At the same time, deep below the surface, far away from human eyes, a fish finds shelter not in the nooks and crannies of rocks, but in litter. In a soda can, 
a plastic crate, a bucket. We don't live here, but our waste does. Lost or abandoned fishing gear cling to the reef, trapping and smothering marine life. We also found scars, trawling lines etched into the seabed, tearing through habitats. Even in the deep, human presence leaves its mark. Another pressure is threatening these fragile ecosystems. Invasive species like lionfish have settled, thriving in warmer waters and preying on natives. As the sea warms, new species will follow. Climate change is reshaping these depths, favoring the heat lovers and fast spreaders. This is why this evidence matters. With the right policies, these habitats and the species that depend on them can be protected.